assalamu alaikum everyone i am dr kavil nas going to present a urinary diversion after the radical cystectomy uh, learning objectives of the two days presentation is patient selection preparation for the surgery different types of urinary diversion urethrocutaneostomy ileal conduit continent cutaneous urinary diversion orthotopic new bladder morbidity and mortality and survival urinary diversion is a procedure to bypass reconstruct or replace the normal urinary tract the goal of the diversion is it should be the non reflexing low pressure even at the high volume so socially acceptable continence non absorptive empties completely and easily catheterizable selection for the type of diversion is depend on the age and survival rate of the patient associated comorbidities oncological extent of the disease renal and hepatic functional status bowel conditions patient's preference and available expertise types of urinary diversion it is divided in the two broad categories incontinent urinary diversion and continent urinary diversions incontinent are further divided into the urethrocutaneostomy ileal and colonic conduits and the continent is divided into the continent catheterizable reservoir substitution cystoplasty or the orthotropic new bladder urethroilosigmoidostomy or the rectal bladder these are different types of the uh, urinary diversion first is the urethrostomy uh, uretros in which we are only taking out the ureter as a stoma it could be the single bilateral and trans ureter urethrostomy where the both ureters are combined and taken out at the single stoma and the conduit are used as a uh, taken as a ileal segment or the colonic segment and taken out as a stoma to the anterior abdominal wall and the sigmoidostomies are where the ureters are directly attached to the sigmoid or the rectal segment of the bowel again the different types of the urinary uh, diversion with the advantages and disadvantages ileal conduit is a technically simpler fewer complication and the well understood no bladder training is required no, no nocturnal incontinence is associated with the ileal conduit the disadvantages of the ileal conduit is that stomal complications hernia or the prolapse stenosis urinary incontinence long term stomal care expensive Indiana pouch is the no normal to near normal urinary continence stoma can be covered with a bandaid or no bag and no nocturnal incontinence will be reported with the urinary diversion of the indiana pouch the disadvantage is this technically difficult surgery stomal complication intermittent catheterization issue and complication of the waste product absorption orthotopic new bladder has advantages that it act as a normal to the near normal urinary continence no stoma better physical image better post operative sexual function and the disadvantage is technically difficult surgery post bladder training nocturnal incontinence and complication of waste product absorption again uh, how many of you have uh, seen uh, diversions please raise your hand so now you people are lucky that uh, you can uh, assist a diversion case uh, now a lot of cystectomies are being done and diversions have been done so the gold standard to date is ileal conduit because uh, it is a bit simple but whenever we talk about diversions the question comes in our mind that uh, why not orthotopic new bladder so there are prerequisites and as dr kavil has shown in a slide that multiple factors have to be taken in consideration what is the disease of the patient what is the patient's wishes what is his status and everything has to be seen and then it can be uh, opted for but a very basic point is when you are planning for orthotopic bladder so you have to uh, have a uh, check that the urethra uh, growth is not at the base of the bladder at the neck and uh, the prostate is clear or not so you have to take those biopsies and check the urethra as well otherwise you will land in uh, problem uh, later so this is a prerequisite that is frequently asked a lot of people come to the clinic and ask in the exam as well that uh, why aren't you making a new bladder in this era so everyone is not a candidate for new bladder so in that case we can make a pouch and make a catheterizable pouch we have made a few but there are prerequisites for that as well we will be discussing it if anybody has got any query or you don't understand anything please feel free to ask patient selection and preparation for the surgery the decision of the urinary diversion is based on patient's underlying disease 
renal function, individual anatomy, personal preference, a careful history taken from the patient, any history of the previous abdominal or the pelvic surgery, intestinal resection, radiation, renal insufficiency. Ulcerative colitis should be noted especially when the selecting a patient of the urinary diversion or the bladder substitute as the part of the colon is used during the diversion. Patient undergo the standard mechanical and the oral antibiotic bowel cleaning one to two days before the procedure. Mechanical bowel preparation include an oral preparation polyethyl glycol given prior to the surgery to clear the fecal materials. Recent data suggests that the mechanical preparation can be avoided as the role of the antibiotic is there but can be uh, covered the contamination of the bacteria. Preoperative antibiotic include the cephalosporin and the metronidazole. Nematic compression is talking applied to the patient until the patient is fully mobilized. Well informed consent should be taken regarding the risk and benefits of the every procedure. Urotrochotinostomy. It is a type of incontinent and the simplest form of the cutaneous urinary diversion. In the older compromised patient who need a supravesical diversion, urotrochotinostomy is the preferred procedure. Technically, either one ureter to which an other shorter one is attached end to side and connected to the skin. Transurotrochotinostomy are the both ureters are directly anastomosed to the skin. Due to the small diameter of the ureter, stroma and stenosis has been observed more often than in the intestinal stromas. This is the pictorial diagram of the ureterostomy. We can take the both ureters separately or combine the both and take in it as a stoma. In, uh, in ureterostomies, the main problem is that it sinks and it goes inside. Uh, so what we need to do is, yesterday we were making a ureterostomy as well. We have to clear all that fat in between and make a wide channel that it, it easily comes out and stays over there and you have to take a stitch and uh, 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 with the sheet or something that it stays over there because I have seen a lot of ureterostomies being sunken inside so take it out a bit more that make a little bit of pout of that and then you, you can uh, uh, make sure that it doesn't sink Dr. Sad, if you like to comment on ureterostomy. Right, yes, there are many points and uh, there are many ways of doing ureterostomy. But uh, over the years, uh, uh, there is a slight bit of consensus how it has to be made. Um, yeah, you are very right that the biggest problem is that it sinks in and the more the fat in the subcutaneous tissue of the abdominal wall the greater and the earlier would be the, that kind of a sink. So uh, it is something which we all must understand that we, we shouldn't just make a stoma uh, that is devoid of uh, um, any vascular tissue. For instance, you need some vascularity around it, otherwise it will be a hole in the abdominal wall and that hole will not hold good, it will rather allow this ureter to go inside so th there are there is a very fine balance between what you can um, as you have said uh, what you can dissect and reject for instance the adipose tissue subcutaneous adipose tissue and how much it is to be left there because that adipose tissue is not something which is just like a cushion or a bag of uh, fat but it also carries a little bit of blood vessel so uh, you have to be very sure with how much is to be sacrificed. The second point is uh, how, uh, how much length of that ureter which you have uh, either made um, earlier or later uh, side to side anastomos just like a, a, a Wallace technique. Uh, there is a formula for it. For instance, there is a head end and there is a tail end the head end should be uh, a little bit more which is like maybe 5 cm and the tail end should be a little bit less which may be like 4 cm so that the, uh, the pouted ureter and the two ureters should rather go a little bit down under gravity. So uh, there, there is a picture and there is a formula uh, I have also um, made it uh, available on the, on the infogram so if anybody wants to have a look at it, it is available, you can see it and then uh, it all depends upon your practice. The more you do, the more you will get the feel of it. And the second thing is, uh, no two patients are uh, alike. When you want to keep these two ureters out of the body, 
they would resist coming out of the body because there is a there is a mesentery attached to it the mesentery as well as other tissues which are attached so uh, there there is always a point how much you can take out but the best thing is the more it is out the easier uh, it is to make a kind of a, a pouted stoma otherwise uh, it will be just flush with the abdominal surface don't make it flush with the abdominal surface it has to be a little bit uh, pouted and uh, ure ureter has got a spiral supply around it mm -hmm. and there is a continuous blood supply going around it and when you are dissecting the ureter so we call it sorry for a vague terminology i bilkul ganja nahi kar de usko aap uske around your tissue hai, you have to dissect that along with the ureter that that spiral supply is intact i was doing in a, in my initial stages uh, at the distal end that was not a problem but when we go to the proximal end it's very difficult to dissect over there and we start cutting it with scissors so we cut the blood supply as well and that ureter became black and we were in problem but it in uh, later so uh, resolved but uh, you should be taking care of this as well ileal conduit it is the simplest and the most common method of the urinary diversion it is associated with the fierce intrac operative and the immediate post operative complication It is a contraindicated in the patient with a short bowel syndrome, inflammatory small bowel disease, and those having the history of extensive radiation. Procedure of the 18 to 20 centimeter of the small intestine ileum separated from the intestinal tract, uh, 15 centimeter away from the ileocecal junction. The continuity of the um, bowel is the maintained by the hand swing anastomosis or the stapled anastomosis. The ureters can be ligated by the end to side anastomosis like this breakers are both are in uh, both are attached to the end to uh, end to end or end to side anastomosis and the stoma is taking out from the abdominal wall This is the procedure and the longer conduit may be required in the obese patient but the shorter segment minimizes the observe uh, observative surface area Mesentery is divided proximal and distally and ligating by the mesenteric blood vessel. Isolated segment for the conduit construction. Continuity of the small bowel re-established. Mesenteric windows are closed to prevent the risk of herniation in the bowel. Isolated segment flush with the worm's line till the clear liquids um, come. And the left ureter brought to the uh, left right lower quadrant beneath the sigmoid mesocolon. And the ureter enteric, uh, enteric anastomosis is the made. Single J ureteral strand is placed in the both ureter to avoid the uh, risk of the stricture formation. So when you are uh, dissecting the left ureter, you have to dissect a bit up proximally because that ureter has to come beneath the sigmoid mesocolon. Are you people getting it? It doesn't come above the bowel; it goes below and comes back like this. Are is everyone clear about it? ureteric implantation there are the variety of this ureter small bowel anastomosis which are of the two basic type end to side or end to end the end to side anastomosis may be constructed in the reflexing or the non reflexing manner these are the ureteric small bowel anastomosis which includes the breaker anastomosis valis technique tunnel small bowel anastomosis split nipple technique and leader technique we are discussing by one by one Breaker's anastomosis. It is a reflexing end-to-side ureterointestinal anastomosis, simple to perform and has a low complication rate. The procedure is that the adventitia of the ureter is sutured to the serosa of the bowel. A small, uh, full thickness serosa and the mucosal plug is removed. Interrupted 5-0 PDS sutures approximate the ureter to the full thickness of the mucosa and the serosa. The anterior layer is completed by the interrupted sutures, placing through the adventitia of the ureter and the serosa of the small bowel. Valis technique is a frequently used reflexing anastomosis technique in which end of the intestine is the suture with the end of the ureter. There are the three basic type of the anastomosis. The end of one ureter is sutured to the end of other ureter and this composite is sutured to the end of bowel. A Y anastomosis of ureter is constructed and sutured to the end of the bowel. A head to tail ureter ureter anastomosis is formed and sutured to the end of bowel. Here, the both ureter, uh, both ureter is speculated and laid down each other and are combined to the bowel loop. And the apex of the one ureter is sutured to the apex of the other ureter. The posterior medial wall of the both ureters are then sutured together. The lateral wall are then sutured to the intestine. This is the head to tail, and this is the side to. So the above one is known as Wallace one technique, and the 
lower one is the Wallace 2 technique. So uh, the, these two have got their own designated uh, names. Names. So what about a uh, question for you? Which one is better, Bricker or Wallace? A question frequently asked. And what is the advantage of Bricker and what is the disadvantage of Bricker, vice versa, Wallace? Dr. Mazar? Technically, Bricker is uh, 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 simple to perform, uh, but, but the complication includes the structure of the uh, structure is more in the Bricker as compared to Wallace. And Wallace is a, is a reflexing uh, 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 into, uh, as compared to uh, Bricker. That I mean uh, to know of. Anybody else like to comment? Dr. Shaukat, what's your take on it? I think uh, breaker uh, could be better because if there is um, a structure or uh, reflex, it will occur in the both ureters in the case of wireless. In the breaker, if there is a structure or there is reflex, it may occur in uh, one ureter. And uh, it is surgeon's preference. Yeah. Any any procedure can be done, but we need to know the advantages and disadvantages. So. If you are connecting both ureters together like in Wallace and the patient has got any malignancy, stone, any other problem, any stenosis, then both of those ureters will be compromised. Mm -hmm. So if you have placed it separately, then you can easily disconnect one and take that kidney out if it has got a mass or any other issues or non-functioning kidney or anything. So you need to know the advantages and disadvantages of these procedures rather than commenting which one is better or not in exam point of view. So if you uh, know these advantages and disadvantages, you won't be stuck in that. Uh, you got the point that if you separately connected it, if that kidney becomes uh, non-functioning or it has got a tumor, you can easily remove that, uh, close that stump of the ileal conduit or whatever you have made. If they are both connected together, you have to open both of them and uh, reflex as well from one to another. Tunnel small bowel anastomosis. It is a non-reflexing anastomosis by the construction of the submucosal tunnel. A small transverse incision is given on the small bowel and the second transverse incision 3 cm lateral to the it is given. The submucosal tunnel is made, button of the mucosa is removed and the ureter is drawn through the tunnel and switched directly to the mucosa. The rent of the serosa is closed and the advantage of the ureter suture is placed and the second serosa and secured to the serosa at the uh, ureteral entrance to the small bowel. It is a non-reflexing anastomosis, which prevents the reflex. Split nipple technique. It is also a non-reflexing anastomosis by using a nipple mechanism. It may be applied to the small or the large bowel. The ureter is speculated and turned back on itself and the end of ureter is secured to the advantage of the ureter with the interrupted 5-0 PDS. The cuff is stabilized at the corner with the suture and the button of the uh, seromuscular and the mucosa is removed and the ureter is then placed into the bowel such that it protrudes through the mucosa. The advantage is this, it is also prevent the reflexing in the upper tray. Lead of tracking. It is a non-reflexing anastomosis by lying the ureter onto the interior of the bowel wall resulting into the submucosal tunnel when it is re-epithelized. The small bowel is open for approximately 4 to 5 cm. A longitudinal rent in the mucosa is met and the mucosa is raised. The distal end of the mucosal rent and the hole is made in the serosa and the ureter is drawn through. The entrance of ureter through the serosa should be at least 2 cm proximal to cut end of the bowel to allow the sufficient bowel length to close the end. The ureter is speculated and switched to the mucosa and the muscle layer. The mucosa is not reapproximated over the top of the ureter but rather the switched to the side of it. So, to prevent the uh, stenosis of the um, ureter. Sir, no. uh, uh, what is your take on it? We have done wellness, we have done bricker. Have we tried any other? In dream plant, we have used the nipple technique as well. But uh, any other technique we have tried over here or in? I don't know, but uh, the earlier part of our journey, uh, earlier means uh, great, uh, earlier than 2014. It was all Wallace. It was not, uh, and Wallace won. It was not Breaker uh, for many reasons. For instance, if you, if you are in the business of uh, doing reconstructive surgery, uh, yes, you, you must know what are the different ways of doing uh, a certain thing. But 
you have to practice only one uh, technique so that you you will be pretty sure that your results are maybe in the 90s for instance uh, uh, the cases that um, me and my colleagues my senior colleagues have done through Wallace technique we haven't seen a single case of urethroallel anastomosis or sorry urethroallel uh, stricture so uh, that uh, kind of background comes whenever you you have a lot of patients gone through a single technique but if you are a surgeon and uh, now and then for every case you start with a new technique you you can't be sure that how many of your cases have been um, <coughs> progressed to a positive side and how many have got a negative kind of uh, a result so uh, but there, there there are always limitations for instance what is the biggest advantage for me with the breaker technique is whenever one ureter is short you got to have an option where you can make this ureter anastomose with the a long segment of ileal conduit the, the intestine so it has got its uh, position in that respect but if your ureter is pretty long enough which uh, uh, by means of which we uh, I can um, just uh, give you an example for instance if their left ureter is uh, uh, long enough it can be made to pass through behind the mesentery towards the right side and then you can make an anastomosis with the Wallace technique but if it is not then it is best to do uh, with the Baker technique so every technique has got its own advantages and disadvantages but you must know when God forbid there is a position there is a condition or a situation in which you don't have an extra length <coughs> then what to do you, you can't just uh, uh, abandon your procedure you must know the way, means and ways of doing about such complicated positions that is one thing the second thing is uh, now we have got two different arms one is for instance your group and and the other groups that have come after 2014 uh, they are doing all cases, uh, almost all cases with the breaker type of technique probably because it is uh, easier done and probably because it is less time consuming. Um, but again, you, you have to have a head to head kind of comparison. For a third technique, we don't have that third technique. I, I think uh, there is another group that is doing it and that is the Murli Saab's group. So uh, we must consult that group. I don't know whether there is anyone present from that group here in this hall now. But if we ask them, because they are in the reconstructive uh, 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 business and they are doing it for different purpose. They are not doing it for the purpose of uh, oncology or oncological surgery. So we have got now two or three different kind of groups working on a different uh, uh, backgrounds. We can have a very good discussion and a very good comparative study now. Right. So uh, we'll stop here and then from uh, next Thursday we start from lead up technique onwards.